This meeting is being recorded. Hi, everyone. Okay, thank you all for joining. Actually, I think because this is a webinar, I'm not sure if they can raise their hands because I'm not even seeing. Can they raise? Their hand? Oh, awesome. Thank you. Great. So actually, um, just quickly before we go, if you guys would prefer, if anyone in the um, room prefers to have a Spanish translation, please raise your hand. We are working to provide that service for today's webinar. Muy buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos. Vamos a dar inicio al webinar de esta tarde. Si hay alguien que necesite instrucción o traducción en español, por favor, um, vaya al icono y levante, haga una señal con la manita, puede levantar la mano para indicar que necesita interpretación. Right. Well, I'm not seeing any hands, but um, if you guys can, if it comes up again, you put it in the chat and see if you need it. We'll keep an eye out on the chat as well, but I do want us to get started as we have a limited time. Um, so again, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Um, so today we're going to be talking about our Coastal Stories grant program. My name is Fanny Yang, and I am a PM in or program manager in the North, sorry, not program manager, project manager in the North Coast. I will be presenting this today's webinar with Rachel Couch, who is a project manager in Central Coast. We have our beautiful tech whiz and Q&A guru, Erica Johnson and Emily Lopez, as you can see on the, the slides ahead of you. So Emily will be keeping an eye out on any questions that is put in the Q&A box. And then Erica is gonna be our um, Zoom host of any logistical questions that come up, put it in the chat and she will address that. Um, so we're excited to put on another grant round for our Coastal Stories program. This team has worked hard to bring the grant program to life in 2022. And then we're happy to offer this program again for another year. Projects that were selected last year are currently underway, and we look forward to creating um, and selecting a new batch of projects to continue the good work. Okay, really quickly, quick logistics on the um, Zoom. So in this presentation, we're gonna talk about the program, we're gonna dive into the pre-proposal a little bit, and then what are the first steps to applying, and then we're gonna hold about 30 minutes for the Q&A at the end. So um, the chat function, we will use the chat function to share links and useful information. If you have questions, again, please submit your, please submit them in the QA box and not in the chat if possible, because this will allow us to keep track of all the questions more clearly and we want to make sure we don't want to miss anything. Um, we also encourage folks to utilize the chat to connect with each other. Okay, so last year we utilized a Jamboard to kind of start these relationship building and connections amongst our applicants. We wanna promote collaboration, new relationships and partnerships to strengthen coastal story projects. So maybe your organization is working with the same community groups or have a similar perspective to share. Maybe you're a land or property owner and wanna participate in increasing public access and inclusivity. Um, so like I said, we used a Jamboard last time, but there was some logistical um, issues. So this time we're just going to use a Google Sheet and Erica's gonna drop the link in the chat. Feel free to go in anytime during the webinar, um, go in and add your organization, contact info, and then say a few words about your project or what you plan to propose. And then also note that by putting your information on the spreadsheet, you are consenting to us sharing your information in a webinar follow-up. All right, so for folks who um, may be interacting with us for the first time, we are the State Coastal Conservancy. We are a small grant making state agency and our vision is to protect, restore, and provide access to the coast for all Californians. This is a map of our jurisdiction. The length of our coastline is 1800 kilometers long and the green zone shows where we work and fund projects. It can um, also partially expand inland up to coastal watersheds. 
So the Coastal Stories Grant Program was brought to life from our Internal Justice, Equity, and Diversity and Inclusion Committee. We were brainstorming tangible ways we can make the outdoors more inclusive along the coast, and we came across an Atlantic article titled Five Ways to Make the Outdoor More Inclusive. So within that article, there were two um, recommendations, teach the full history of the outdoors and make all visitors feel welcome and secure that really resonated staff. Um, and this is because a lot of the outdoor stories in America are from European settlers perspective. And as a public grant funding agency, we wanna broaden the stories, these coastal stories within our jurisdiction when to help amplify the voices so the Coastal Stories Program, um, we seek to fund projects that plan, develop, and implement storytelling installations or physical materials that represent communities and voices that may include, but not limited to, um, Black, Indigenous, people of colors, people with disabilities, immigrant communities, low-income communities, and other historically excluded groups. So the story installation can include murals, signage, monuments, guides, and more. Just want to note though, however, any digital content is fundable. I see someone at SCC webinar. So um, Erica, you have a hand up. Hi, so sorry. I, I just wanted to pause real quick. We're having trouble with the translation feature in Zoom. And so I was wondering if we can just translate a few of the key slides. Um, maybe at this, uh, Felisa, if you can translate what is written on this particular slide because it's uh, the about the grant program. Sí, buenas tardes. Uh, en esta tarde estamos aquí reunidos en esta junta en, uh, hablando sobre las historias del programa um, Costal y uh, por medio de las historias y el programa de uh, Costal que estamos viendo aquí estamos uh, viendo poder lograr los fondos para desarrollar y uh, de hacer instalaciones uh, de otros materiales físicos que representan a las comunidades y las voces de la comunidad que pueden incluir y no son limitada, limitadas al BIPOC, um, a personas con discapacidades, inmigrantes dentro de la comunidad, personas de bajos recursos um, y, y otras uh, también comunidades excluidas y históricas. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to add a couple more points and then you can also, Julissa, you can translate those as well before we move to the next slide. Um, so story installations can include murals, signage, monuments, guides, and more. Any digital content is fundable. However, they need to be associated with a physical product. Bueno, esto puede incluir monumentos, um, murales también. Y, can you repeat what you said about the physical programs, please? Oh, yes. So story installation can include murals, signage, monuments, and guides. So any digital content is fundable. However, they need to be associated with a physical product. Okay. Let's... Um, Este proyecto puede incluir uh, murales, monumentos, insulaciones de historia, contenido también uh, físico, guías. Great. Thank you. Okay, so I'll go to the next slide. All right, so um based on these so these are our five program priorities we've added some new ones as you can see on the slide um, as we've reflected on our grant round last year and then also seeing the kind of projects that were being submitted the first three are the same the last two are new so the first one is promote a sense of belonging in outdoor spaces by presenting perspectives that include BIPOC or other historically excluded communities this one's pretty straightforward it's kind of also the core of our grant program as well. Number two, engage representatives from historically excluded communities to develop and share their coastal perspectives. So we want to ensure that our projects are accurately reflective of the voices that they're trying to highlight. Um, and this would require that you partner um, or engage with the representatives, with storytellers from those communities 
to ensure that the stories are um, representative. Number three, improve educational content in California's outdoor spaces by correcting one-sided histories, retelling stories in a more appropriate and inclusive way, and developing new content that shares untold stories. So the last two, number four, um, use creative forms of community engagement. So telling the story and holding space to recognize different perspectives is important, but how are you ensuring that the stories are heard and are actually reflective of the communities? Number five, create new stories that are free and publicly accessible for the community and or intended audiences. Again, how are you ensuring that the stories are heard or seen? If there's a paywall that is equitable, if it's not physically reachable, um, physically, physically reachable and the public can't interact with your project. So how will the end product and materials be shared? And then I think I will pause here for Hulisa to do the translations. And I think this will probably be um, one of the slides that will have translated. Bueno, el sentido es de promover un sentido de pertenencia en los espacios al aire libre presentando perspectivas que incluyen a BIPOC y otras comunidades históricamente, históricamente excluidas. BIPOC u otras comunidades históricamente excluidas, comunidades históricamente excluidas para desarrollar y compartir sus corteras, costeras. Uh, mejorar el contenido educativo de los espacios al aire libre de California, de California corrigiendo las historias parciales, volviendo a cortar las demás apropiadas e inclusivas y desarrollando nuevos contenidos que compartan historias no conta contadas. Novedad, utilizar formas creativas de participación comunitaria. Novedad, crear historias gratuitas y accesibles al público a la comunidad y el público destinatorio. Yeah. Okay, so eligibility, oh, sorry, not eligibility. Um, changes to program round two. So another program change is the source of funding. Um, the previous year was based on general funds from the state, which gives us some flexibility in how they could be used. This year we are relying on bond funds so these funds are public tax dollars and have stricter requirements. So projects need to result in tangible products and there is a minimum maintenance period to maximize the life of the funds. So for this reason, applicants should have a plan for the maintenance of your projects for at least 15 years, but conservancy staff can also assist with determining an appropriate maintenance plan. Okay, now is on to eligibility. Um, very quickly, applicants must be either a federally recognized tribe, a 501c3 nonprofit, or a public agency. If you're not a 501c3 nonprofit or a federally recognized tribe, you can still apply, but you're going to have to apply with a partner that meets this requirement, and then they will be the ones filling out the application, and they will serve as your fiscal sponsor to sign the grant agreement if your project is selected and to also submit invoices. So we're looking to fund eligible projects um, that present storytelling content in a way that's connected to a publicly accessible outdoor space within our jurisdiction. Um, projects should meet at least one of our coastal story program priorities, and we can fund planning and preparation activities such as hiring historians, storytellers, and artists, community engagement activities, um, designing materials, acquiring permits, and then projects that use creative form of storytelling. Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize we were not in eligible projects, we were in eligible projects. So going back, um, this is the examples for eligible projects. Um, projects that use creative forms of storytelling are not listed on the slide or in the RFP here um, are also encouraged to consult with us. So moving on to ineligible projects, some examples of them would be hiring historians or community members to write content without presenting the created content in a way that will reach intended public audiences, primarily social media campaigns and content, and then producing digital content that is not connected to a physical installation. I um, just want to note that our goal, our agency has a goal of protecting 
restoring and providing access to the coast. So if you're interested in other types of projects that aren't related to storytelling, you can see um, our other programs on the Conservancy website or you can contact us to see if your project might be a better fit for our grant programs. So with that, I will pass it on to Rachel to talk more about partnerships, um, the RFP, and the, per the pay proposal. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. We are highly encouraging partnerships between landowners and community story storytellers for this grant program. While CBOs, historians, and other types of uh, storytellers will be able to share, uh, best be able to share the uh, underrepresented stories of California, landowners will be most able to navigate the logistics of implementation, permitting, and maintenance. So if you're a landowner, we encourage you to partner with the CBO uh, and at least know your intended audience and community uh, in order to best elevate stories that are relevant. If you're a community storyteller, we encourage you to partner with a landowner for implementation and maintenance. As Fanny introduced, we have a Google Sheet that we put in the chat um, where you can add your contact info if you're looking to network and develop these partnerships. And we are also happy to help you to build these partnerships. Um, so if you need help finding an appropriate partner, please reach out to us. Next slide. Um, or maybe, maybe we pause there. Um, and let Julissa do a little translation on that previous slide. Okay, sorry about that. Here I am. I was trying to having a hard time opening my microphone. Uh, asociaciones, asociaciones entre propietarios de tierras, organizaciones de base comunitaria, OBC, historia, historiadores, historiadores y otros tipos de narradores, se recomienda encarecidamente uh, propietario de la tierra asociarse con las organizaciones de base comunitaria o elevar las historias culturales revelantes. Cuenta, cuenta, cuenta cuenta de la comunidad, asociarse con el terrateniente para la implantación y el mantenimiento. Es, SCC puede ayudar a poner en contacto a los narradores comunitarios para crear asociaciones con los propietarios. Thanks. Okay, on to selection criteria. Um, we will evaluate projects uh, based on the extent to which they meet uh, Coastal Stories program priorities, which Fanny went over earlier, involve leadership and participation by uh, the community whose story is being told and promotes inclusive experience in the outdoors for all Californians by recognizing uh, cultural, social differences and differences in physical capabilities, history, et cetera. Criterios, criterios de selección, la medida en que el proyecto se ajusta a las prioridades del programa de historias de la costa, el grado de liderazgo y participación de la comunidad cuya historia se cuenta historia, el grado en el que el proyecto fomenta una experiencia más integradora al, al aire libre para todos los californianos, teniendo en cuenta las diferencias culturales y sociales, el aire al aire libre para todos los californianos, teniendo en cuenta las diferencias culturales y sociales, experiencias pasadas, capacidades físicas, conocimientos, etc. Demostración de un alcance significativo y de la participación de la comunidad en el desarrollo de la historia contenido. Demostración de que el proyecto llegará a la audiencia prevista. Utilización de formas creativas de participación de la comunidad. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, some additional selection criteria uh, will demonstrate that the project is ready to proceed in a timely manner. Um, they're expected to begin um, in uh, later to 2023 or early 2024 and must be completed by February of uh, 2027. And uh, we also want to see the applicant's overall ability to carry out the proposed project, including the, having the necessary partnerships, as mentioned before. 
as well as the project team's ability to maintain the project for a reasonable lifetime. Uh, you'll also need to think about site feasibility and um, environmental compliance. So uh, while we don't require um, that uh, what is called CEQA be done at the time of the application, we do need a uh, uh, CEQA analysis to be complete um, by the time the Conservancy authorizes the grant. Um, I don't, uh, Julissa, I don't think uh, that portion is as critical to translate. So. Um, next slide. So uh, the uh, applying for the program consists of um, submitting a pre-proposal, which will be due uh, by 5 p.m. on March 31st of this year. And um, if, if invited, uh, applicants can submit a full proposal and there is a process I will explain. The pre-proposal um, we will respond to within 60 days. And at this point, we will either invite you to submit a full proposal or provide comments and ask that you resubmit um, your pre-proposal or we'll make a decision that your project is not competitive for our program. If you are invited to submit a full proposal, we'll provide the form and instructions and um, you can submit that um, and reach out to us if you need assistance with it. Uh, you'll need to have proof of support from the landowner at this point in the process um, when once submitting a, a full proposal. Once we receive that proposal, we'll get back to you within 60 days on a decision or let you know if we need more time for review. And before grants are awarded, uh, they have to go to our board meeting. We have five board meetings per year. And um, at that point, we write up a grant agreement and can take about six weeks after, after we take it to our board. And Lisa, that's a lot. I'm not sure uh, you'll be able to translate all of that, but um, maybe you can just translate what's on the slide. I think she's having trouble with her microphone. Okay. okay, I'm here. Um, las pre propuestas deben enviarse antes de las 5 p.m. del 3 de marzo de 2023. Antes del 18 de mayo de 2023, el SCC responderá a las pre propuestas, invitando a presentar una propuesta completa, solicitando aclaraciones, nueva, nueva presentación, rechazo de una propuesta previa, solicitantes invitados a presentar una propuesta completa. El SCC notifica la decisión al solicitante en un plazo de 60 días. Autorización de la subvención por el Consejo de Conversión del, um, del Litoral. Thanks. Next slide. So uh, here you will see the uh, cover page for the pre-proposal. And um, it is attached to the RFP. And your, since your pre-proposal will determine whether you get invited to submit a, a full proposal, um, you wanna make sure you're representing your project uh, very well in this step. So uh, we encourage you to reach out to consult with us about your project prior to submission, especially if you're a new applicant, so we can provide initial feedback uh, that may guide you. And uh, so this might look familiar to you if you've applied for other conservancy grant rounds, but the information requested here is pretty straightforward. Basically, um, you'll provide contact information and um, the information of the organization that is the primary applicant. So if you're using a fiscal sponsor, that would be the information you would put on the cover page. But if you're a 501c3, um, you would, you would be, you would not need a fiscal sponsor. Please include your IRS letter as an attachment to your pre-proposal if you are a 501c3 organization. Um, the other, uh, you'll put uh, in other boxes, what is the project name? 
um, the amount of conservancy funds you're requesting and the total cost of the project. And you'll write in the approximate um, start and completion date. Projects, again, are expen extent expected to start later this year and run through um, uh, 2027. In the last box called location info, write down the county or counties that your project will take place in. And um, if you have the latitude and longitude, you can include that as well. Next slide. Uh, regarding the project description and location throughout the pre-proposal, we suggest um, uh, how long your answers should be and the number of sentences or, or paragraphs. Um, and uh, so we're not going to go over the whole, whole pre-proposal, but we do um, suggest that you honor the suggested lengths, although we won't be uh, terribly strict about it. Um, for now, I'll just go over a few of the more complex sections. In the project description and location section, you'll briefly describe your proposed project. And we just really want you to focus on the um, goals and expected outcomes, including the story you would like to tell and what storytelling products uh, will be created um, and who your target audi audience is. Please be specific about um, the portion of the project that we are funding if there are other fund sources involved. Um, you may share additional materials such as links um, or attachments, and that is optional. So um, for the location, please uh, make sure you describe the project site specifically, and if there's signage or insta installations of another kind, um, please share what those will be. You'll need to include a map of the project location, and any additional photos or graphics are optional. Um, do you want to translate that, Lisa, just the slide? Seems to be a delay. I'll, I'll just go on to slide 18. Uh, okay, I'm here. So, la pre la Prepropuesta, descripción y localización del proyecto. Descripción y ubicación del proyecto. Dos párrafos como máximo. Explique los objetivos del proyecto y los resultados esperados. ¿Qué historia está contando? ¿A quién va dirigido? Incluya anexos y archivos adicionales según sea necesario al describir el proyecto. Thanks. Next slide. <clears throat> for the pre-proposal, we do not have, have a set format for the budget uh, table and schedule. So you can use whatever format you prefer. Just make sure you provide all the information requested in the instructions. And we can provide a template if that is helpful for you. Um, and just in terms of the schedule, please provide a schedule that lists all the major um, project tasks and milestones and their estimated completion dates. Next slide. Finally, we just really want to emphasize that um, your pre-proposal should include um, clear information on who you are trying to reach and, and so who are the communities that will be served by the project. Um, again, what specific problem um, will the storytelling project address and how, how do you intend to reach um, those audiences? Um, also, please include metrics on how you will ensure um, that the community you're trying to reach will benefit from the project. Next slide. Almost done here. So at the end of the pre-proposal, there is a checklist you can use when preparing your final submission. Your submission should include the pre-proposal document, 
uh, should be around three pages and project location map and photos. Um, as I mentioned before, you're welcome to, but not required to include additional media plans, images, et cetera, that you may have that would help to convey uh, your project to the review committee. Once your pre-proposal's ready, you'll just submit it to grants at scc.ca.gov. Uh, again, that date is by, uh, March 31st by 5 p.m. And just note that there are two different emails that um, we've been referring to on the slides. You'll submit pr your proposal to grants at scc.ca.gov. But if you um, have a desire to request a consultation or if you have any questions or comments and want to reach out to Conservancy staff, then you will contact the Coastal Stories at SCC email listed here on the slide. We really want to see these stories told uh, and we'll do what we can to support applicants and grantees trying to make this happen. Uh, next slide. With that, uh, that's our Coastal Stories overview. And we would like to thank you all for being here and for your interest in round two of this exciting program. Now we'll open up the floor for questions and Fanny and Erica will read questions that have been written in the Q&A. Um, so please feel free to keep adding to the Q&A. Uh, we'll have little, about 25 minutes for questions. And if there are any we don't get to, we'll do our best to follow up to the group with answers later. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny, Rachel, and Hulusa for the on the fly translation. I apologize for the um, issues with the translation feature. Um, we have a question um, that I thought panelists can uh, jump in and, and answer. Um, this one is from Susan Kirks. Could you give examples of projects that were funded in the last cycle and some apps that were funded and were not funded and why? Yeah, so I think uh, last cycle we had about six projects that were funded um, ranging from across the state. Uh, so I have a couple of projects managing up north um, in Del Norte and in Humboldt, and those were focused on tribal stories and highlighting their relationship and stewardship of the of the land. The applicants um, or the grantee is the city of Crescent City, and then the other project is with the Wiat tribe. And there was one more in the Bay Area with um, the city of San Rafael. Um, the implementers are canal arts and they're working on putting in the signage um, along the shoreline paths and then I think as we go down the coast I don't know if Rachel or Emily can speak a little more about those projects in the south coast um, we funded um, two projects in Los Angeles one of the projects was um well, both of the projects were mirror projects, and one of the projects was for Color the Water, and that one was a surfing mural project to tell stories about Indigenous, Black, and people of color um, representation out on Venice and Dockweiler, uh, and a little bit inland in the Watts community. So it's a total of three murals with community um, input into the designs of the mural. Um, the second project is called Agua Por Vida, and that one was with East Yards Community, um, East Yards Environmental Community Group, and it's a grassroots organization, and they are also doing murals in, um, located in Maywood area, um, and that one is telling a story about um, how this area was used as a beach during segregation because um, Black and Brown people weren't um, totally welcomed on the coast. So um, they want to um, create um, unity and representation of how folks connect to, to the LA River in that time. And that is the, the LA River is within our coastal watershed. So we were able to fund that project. Um, Rachel, I'm not would you like to um, present the central? Coastal? Sure. Yeah, we've uh, funded a project in the city of Guadalupe, which is a um, small agricultural community uh, just west of the city of Santa Maria in northern Santa Barbara County. And uh, the 
the Guadalupe Dunes Center um, submitted a proposal to develop um, signage that would be placed throughout the city of Guadalupe um, that will be created um, by community members of different cultural heritage um, uh, groups, uh, including um, uh, the Chumash um, indigenous folks, as well as uh, Latin American and I believe um, Chinese immigrants, I mean, uh, uh, descendants of, of Chinese immigrants. And they will be um, telling the story of Guadalupe in addition to uh, how the community interacted with the Guadalupe Dunes uh, complex, which is a, a big natural feature of the area. A lot of people in Guadalupe have never been to the the beach or the dunes, but that are relatively nearby. Um, and there's also going to be a mural that um, will kind of represent that story as well. So, mm -hmm. and then just addressing Susan's last uh, second part of the question about why some apps were not funded, um, I just want to like put out there that last year was you know our first ever grant round. We received a record number of pre proposals um, for a million dollars in grant funding. Um, all of the pre-proposals when we told it up, it was like $13 million. So competitiveness was definitely one thing. Um, we also looked at how the stories were gonna be um, eventually dispersed and shared with the communities. So we looked at community engagement. Um, although there were some creative storytelling products that were being um, recommended or suggested, uh, but there was there was also that missing component of community engagement and ensuring how communities are able to access these materials and then sort of internalize the materials so that they can feel a sense of belonging. So that was one thing that we um, looked at as well. And um, then also, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Emily. Yeah, go for it. I was just gonna add also feasibility um, as well. I just want to um, take a pause for a second. Um, there's two questions in the chat, um, but if there's if there is anyone in this um, on on the attendee list that needs translation, um, please just contact us directly, and we'll, we're able to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you all. And um, Spanish services could be provided. Um, we couldn't, unfortunately, we couldn't get the Spanish translation services to work here, um, but in the future. Um, we will work that out. And if needed, um, we can take one-on-one -on -one phone calls with folks. Si hay alguien que necesite traducción en español, se puede comunicar con nosotros y podemos tener una visita uno a uno para poderles uh, llegar la información ya que tuvimos problemas con la traducción esta mañana. Okay, do we want to jump into answering the questions in the chat? Yeah. Yeah, the next question is, in effect, is this a three-year grant, 2024 to 2027, and typically are these $200,000 grants, or could the grant amount be greater? Yes, yeah, so um, I think right now, because of the available pot of money that we have, which is just a million dollars, we're going to keep it at um, 200K grants. Um, if there's justification on your budget as to why it would be more, um, we, we will review that in the application and see if you know, it makes sense. We might end up also doing partial grant awards, so that's something to think about. Um, I, Fanny, do we want to add to so, um, just just a couple? Um, we we were looking into our bond funding, and this grant actually will be more competitive if you have met matching funds. Um, unfortunately, um, you know we for equitable reasons we we have been looking at how we take those matching funds away because we do know that it makes some grants less competitive but the the funding that we have available is the matching funds are a requirement unfortunately so if you do have if there is um, other grants that you can help with getting this grant that would be helpful but it's not just matching funds it's also um a, is it staff time that is included as matching funds? 
and mm -hmm. volunteer is volunteer work included can you guys confirm right so funds volunteer time and staff time that is also considered as matching so um, please include that in your application The next question is, um, if it, there's a funded project covering the same tribal area as a um, previous project, would it be competitive? For instance, the San Rafael projects versus a Inverness area of the same tribe. So this would be um, in, comparison to a current project that's already happening in the same tribal area? Or are you saying if um, there's like two or three applicants that are going to be working with similar tribes in the, in the region? And then um, you can take the time to type maybe um, add, can they add a comment to clarify that question? Maybe Fanny, it would, it would be helpful just to, for both scenarios. Um, I think, could, could I try answering this one? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, um, so when we're reviewing applications, we do consider the spread of where these projects are occurring and who is getting those grant funds. So if you're telling a story of a tribe and another project is telling a story um, with the, the same tribe, you know, I think that we would want to contact the tribe and and um, you know figure out like okay what which is the most high priority project because there are other tribes and other communities um, that also want to tell a story so it's it's really you know how strong is your relationship to the community that you're telling the story for um, and. Um, I think to an extent, is it inclusive of the community also that's there now? Um, I think are some of the questions that, that we are going to ask because we want to be able to tell everyone's story, but we also can't you know, provide a huge chunk of funds to one group while there are other groups in other areas that aren't getting funding. Um, I don't see another comment from that um, person. So please let us know if that answered your question um, and maybe I can move on to the next question and then Emily, I'll hand it off to you to, to moderate. Um, so this question is from Maxwell Bracey. Is there one link where we can see physical representations of past grantees projects? Do you want to take that? Yeah, I can, yeah, so yeah. Um, this pro this grant program just started last year, so projects are just getting started this January, and so we don't have any past projects to, so, to show as of now, um, but we are working on um, creating a platform or something of some sort for, for all these projects to be accessible and heard by folks, so that is in the works. Um, yeah, that think that answers that. Um, I also want to add um, a way to see the previous projects or a description of the previous projects is through our staff rec that we've written up. Um, so they were presented to our board for approval, funding approval on se September last year. So we could also share that link and it'll have a description of the, um, the projects. Can somebody put that the, the staff rec in the chat? The staff rec link. I can do that. Okay. Um, the next question is says, would smaller grants be competitive? And it, it, I think that is a project-based question. Um, I, the funding, I think we're looking at content rather than than funding. So the funding and the, the project needs needs to match the scope of work. Um, 
if you have other fundings to cover your cost, um, then that would be, it would make it competitive in terms of matching contributions in that end, but we, we're, we're trying to weigh everything um, together. So the next question is, will the recorded webinar be available? And the answer is yes. Um, we will post this webinar on our YouTube page and then share it with everyone who um, signed up to this webinar. We have we, we should have everyone's emails and so we'll, we'll send it out to folks. It'll also be on the grant page. So. The next question is, what percentage of match is required? Um, I don't think we have an answer to that just yet. Why don't Why don't we get back to you over email? We don't require a match. We, we do require a match. Well, it's going to be more competitive if you have a match. Right. It's more competitive, but it's not one of our requirements. Okay. All right. So the next question is, do you have an idea if the grant will be available in the in the future years? And so as of now, we have grants available for for another year and that we will we will reassess um, whether we will have funding available. It's all dependent on um, the funds that are allocated to the state coastal conservancy and where where there is availability. So we have funds for another year as of now. So the question is, where in the RFP does it discuss matching funds and can you repeat what counts as matching funds? So I this the, the matching funds discussion just kind of came up as of last week. And so unfortunately we weren't able to put in a description of matching funds in the RFP. We will be discussing internally on how we will address this matching funds um, um, discussion. So we might have to have an addendum to the RFP and have some clarifications, um, but that, that's gonna be worked out. And so we'll, we'll stay in touch over email. The next question is, would, would you fund a project of the same tribal area of a prior funded that is a different story, a story that is not currently told? The relationship is of the community and a family story. Um, I would encourage this, attend, this um, project to contact the Coastal Stories um, email and so that we can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion on what it is and um, we can give you better guidance. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions come in. We'll stay on the line just in case any other folks have questions. The next question is, we are considering talking about issues of genocide in the Mendocino community with Pomo and Chinese Americans, potential to bring in facilitators called international sites of conscious who work with a community to help them to t tell the untold stories. In such a case, our proposal might have um, money set aside for agreed upon community project. Does a project work within your structure? Um, Yes, I think this this project does work within within our structure. Does yeah, anyone? I, yeah, can I add that because of the bond funding? Um, so yes, we can we can fund this project uh, where you are interacting with where you are funding the or paying the facilitator to work with the community to gather that material. Um, and I think at the end of the project, the tangible product, um, it should be either presented in a way that is 
sort of like an installation or an exhibit. So that's something to think about. So, but in terms of like the story context, that's totally fine for um, our program. So the next question is, um, for now, could you repeat your list of matching fund examples? Yeah, the, the matching funds um, could be, uh, contributions could be anywhere from money, property, or services. And services is volunteer time or staff time um, and property or money as well. So hope that answers that. We do have a question in the chat box from Jennifer. And she's asking how many total projects do you expect to fund? Yeah, so that is um, totally dependent on it. We weigh everything in terms of scoring, um, funding, availability. And um, from there, we, we choose how much we are able to fund. Last year, we selected 10 pre-proposals to submit a full proposal. And then from there, we from there, we funded six proposals under our Coastal Stories grant, and then two, two of their proposals are actually funded. We, we found other funding um, with other funding sources because they were able to match other projects within other regions. So um, yeah, it is, it is dependent on various resources available. I'm not, I'm not seeing any other questions come in. Um, I will say, I will put in our email, our grant program's email in the chat. So if you have any other questions that come up, feel free to email us. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we look forward to seeing your pre-proposals. We're excited to get this program going um, and we wanna get these stories told. So please, please submit your application pre-proposals. Um, does anyone else want to say any anything else? I uh, just want to say thank you all for joining the webinar today, taking you know the time out of your lunch hour to come and listen to us talk about this wonderful program. We are, as Emily said, we are excited to see the new batch of projects coming in, and we hope that throughout this webinar, you've been also been able to connect with other partners and other organizations that may be doing the same thing as you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Thanks, all.